Penn State's back in the top five when it comes to class of 2024 recruiting rankings for the team. Now, how are they going to stay in there? Well, they're going to have to continue to land those prized prospects, especially when it comes to wide receiver and defensive line. You are locked on Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. My name is Zach Seiko. I am your host, and I am joined by Rivals Penn State publisher Richie Schneider right over on the other side. Richie, it's great to have you back. Three commits in one day, so you're one of the perfect people we can have on to talk about everything Penn State football recruiting. Yeah, big weekend for Penn State, official visit weekend number one, and uh, they came away with three commitments, so <laughs> to this class is just uh, keeps building and building. And Locked on Nittany Lions is your go-to podcast for Penn State Rivals. Visit happyvalleyinsider.com for all of the latest, especially with Penn State recruiting. I think Dylan put it out, Dylan Callaghan Crowley, who's a guest on the show, of course, you're going to see his new episode that he and I did together, but uh, he put out uh, a post saying how much coverage they devoted and how many articles uh, have been up there for the latest in Penn state recruiting. I was like, wow. And he wrote a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, no, Dylan is grinding, man. He is, uh, he is the the backbone of a uh, happy Valley insider right now. He, uh, he grinds harder than anyone. So check it out. Happy Valley insider.com. Okay. Richie. And of course, before we move any further, where can people keep up with what you do? Um, yeah, I mean, what well, other than happy Valley insider.com, you could follow me on Twitter at rivals, Richie, uh, retweeting, tweeting all kinds of Penn state content, um, anything college football or basketball related. Um, it's probably on my Twitter profile somewhere. Yeah. And if you like Rutgers, UConn Rutgers, UConn yeah. you can, yeah, you got coverage of them as well, but Penn state, yeah. uh, huge weekend for them. Uh, Sunday, June 4th, mm -hmm. not one, not two, not, but three. Three yeah. recruits, three commits all in one day. This vaults Penn State back into the top five. But you look at rivals now, of course, there's it seems to be a little bit of a few discrepancies in the industry right now when it comes to recruiting rankings. But we're going off of rivals here, and Penn State has vaulted back into the top five. They jumped over Oregon and Ohio State, which feels even better, Nittany Lion fans. But now Penn State with 17 commits, verbal commits in the class of 2024 is back in the top five. Richie, uh, your thoughts on that? Does that uh, does that ranking hold true? Yeah, I think it's definitely top five for starters. And I'd argue that some of these commitments that happened over the weekend are super underrated. Yeah. Um, just starting with, the, I don't know if you want to dive right into it or not, but just starting with Xavier Gillum. He's a 5.5 yeah. 5, three-star kid and watch his tape and I'm like, how put him up as 5.5 three star like what's going on here like yeah. but no he uh i think he'll definitely get a nice bump in the next update um the thing with our rankings is we don't update them non-stop we update them every couple months after getting a couple in-person evals more film comes out a lot of factors kids grow kids add weight um etc but gilliam on tape looks really really good um he he plays the ed he's a kind of an edge rusher and an interior defensive lineman um, but I'd argue his higher ceiling is probably along the interior. It's already 6'3", 250-ish, 255-ish. So he's just going to pack on those pounds. And my always my big thing with linemen, whether it be on uh, the offensive side or defensive side, you're never going to play year one probably, but unless you're a, a stud like a denied Dennis Sutton person. Yeah. But even right. then, even him, he didn't really play a ton of snaps either. But uh, I think you're going to need to get in the weight room and add some weight, add turn some of that fat into muscle. And stuff like that and just kind of learn technique at the end of the day like he's pretty explosive gilliam but he's still gonna have to learn a little bit of technique because it seems like he kind of just uses his speed more than anything but uh once he gets that little uh that little short burst uh speed on that edge it's he's dangerous so we'll wait and see what he uh what he can do in the future but i'm a big fan of this get yeah, Gilliam's not the only one who could make a slight position change. Dewan Lane is currently being recruited mm -hmm. as a safety. He's listed as a defensive back on rivals, wherever else you look, right? It seems yeah. like this is a guy that's going to fit in with Anthony Poindexter and Terry Smith's plans. Not mm -hmm. necessarily. It sounds like he could be a linebacker, an outside linebacker, whether that's the Will or the Sam, that's yet to be determined. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other, uh, at least analysis that i've read and just watching his tape because he is a safety so it would make sense for him to be the on-ball linebacker with the tight end focusing mm -hmm. on that strong side slot where he can be a coverage guy at the same time in the box so dewan lane great size 
great athleticism, great instincts because he's got that coverage ability. He's personally my favorite of the three that committed on Sunday. But uh, what do you think about Lane? Does he fit in more at that safety? Could he stay at the safety spot or do you think he'll ultimately end up in the box? So, so this kind of reminds me of the Dakari Nelson recruitment last recruiting cycle, just because I had him pegged as a linebacker through and through, and then you saw some more tape come out and he goes and does that. Uh, what was it? The Mississippi versus uh, Alabama um, all-star game. And we had a bunch of tape come out from that. And I'm like, Holy hell, this guy moves like a safety, like, but he's yeah. like six, three, 200 and something pounds. And I'm like, all right, well maybe, maybe he sticks in safety. So um, that's the nice thing is you can kind of move them. Dewan Lane, similar to Dakari Nelson, you can probably move him a little bit closer to the box and play that linebacker type hybrid role that everyone loves nowadays. Yeah. Um, and, and like you said, when it comes to coverage in terms of covering a tight end as a linebacker, he'll fit that perfectly because he already has the coverage skills as a DB. Yeah. But um, yeah, he, and he's a hard hitter too over the middle, which I, I love when it comes to defensive backs. If they're going to lay the wood across the middle, that's huge for me. But um He's just smooth. He's really quick. He moves really well in transition, and he, and he does a good job in turning and running whenever necessary. So I, I'm a big fan of this kid. Um, there's no doubt in my mind he's a Rivals 250 kid. I know I yeah. think he's 237 right now. And again, another kid that could move up the rankings um, over our next update. So it's it's definitely going to be one to keep an eye on. And like I said, this is top five currently for Rivals. It could potentially jump higher in the next update, but uh, it all depends on who gets what and this and that and a lot of factors in play still. Well, I look at this list, right? And, you know, you go to happyvalleyinsider.com and you can find the exact list, but guys like Luke Reynolds are going to get a ratings bump. Uh, mm -hmm. Ethan Grunkmeyer, I think, deserves one as well. For sure. And then if you really want to... If you really want to... Not, not necessarily... I don't want to say split hairs, but eventually... Mm -hmm. Derek Plaza is going to move up and he's a commit that we're going to talk about as well here in the upcoming segment. But I look at all these guys who are currently John Mitchell uh, is probably due for a ratings bump as well. So Penn state, yeah. again, getting at the ground level and, and riding the elevator all the way to the top <laughs> is these guys, they, they turn into the prospects that Penn state knows that they can be. So let's talk about Garrett Plaz in the second segment. Before we get to that, let's hear from our sponsor of today's episode, and that is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Make a fast break over to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs. The NBA finals are upon us because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is right, $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet does not win. Great promotions every day. It's a safe, secure, super easy to use app. And this is my favorite feature. You get paid instantly when you win. So there's no better place to play all of the playoff action than America's number one sports book. That is FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That is FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And once again, thanks so much for making Locked On Nittany Lions your first listen and watch every single day. Check out happyvalleyinsider.com. Locked On Nittany Lions is Penn State Rivals. Go to a podcast and check out all the other recent podcasts as well as recruiting is heating up. Penn State is on a heater right now. Three, how many, Richie, how many other programs are getting three commits in one day? Not many. Um, not many at all, if any. I don't yeah. think anything, uh, yeah. at least in the past month or so, so. Because I see that from uh, time to time, and I'm fairly active on Twitter, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's more, a lot more browsing than content creation, which should probably change. But when you, I, I see the the news, oh, so and so, this outlet, whether it is Rivals or or mm -hmm. any of the other databases, right? They'll say, hey, these five schools are the hottest teams in recruiting right now, and they might land yep. two in a week or or two over the span of two weeks. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, they're high profile, of course, and you respect them for gaining those commits, but Penn State got three legitimate verbal commitments from guys that were sought after the likes of, uh, let's take DeWan Lane, for example, Michigan, mm -hmm. Alabama, Georgia, right? Beating those schools out in terms of Xavier Gilliam, not the same type of rap sheet, but still Duke, NC State, Virginia Tech, mm -hmm. same thing with Derek Plaz. Let's talk about Derek Plaz now because I – I think specifically I asked this to, to Dylan and I've asked it to some other people. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. I've asked it to you. So forgive me for the deja vu, but Penn yeah. state already has a lot 
of <laughs> offensive line commits. I know that some of them are going to change, right? We there's uh, let's take for example Caleb Brewer, who's a jumbo athlete, right? And this is something that mm-hmm. Dylan pointed out specifically is yeah. that he could play offensive line, defensive line, tight end, even. So he could he could see himself as potentially a blocker and a pass catcher. Mm-hmm. But if you look right now, they have six offensive linemen designated in the class of 2024 so for me when i looked at guys like Derek plaz and ty hilton who also visited from the state of florida i just in my mind my natural my natural gut instinct was these guys aren't going to commit at least not like this maybe maybe down the road but they already have five guys in the fold and Derek plaz is going to take that he's going to take that jump as well so he's a true offensive tackle he's not going to slide into guard or center so we know that about mm-hmm. his position but what what does plaz bring to the table and why did he commit to penn state when they already have five offensive linemen at least listed not planned necessarily mm-hmm. with more on the way potentially yeah he, he kind of just fell in love with uh the campus with uh the coaching staff just built a really good bond with everybody and uh end of the day that now that's all it really took um yeah. now um he's he's a really intriguing prospect like because he had number one i guess he they beat out they had a duke official visit next weekend miami the weekend after that north yeah. carolina state and then florida state was his finalist as well so they were expected to get an official visit too uh whether it be in probably not june but maybe later in fall but he just straight up said i'm on the visit i'm done i'm canceling everything that's that's it this is the place i want to be um the family atmosphere is what really sold him more than anything and i think you can argue penn state might have a better family atmosphere slash culture whatever you want to call it there's so many different words for it than the majority of programs in all of college football james franklin and crew have built a really good bond with their players um not even while they're on campus even after they graduate and move on they're always coming back to campus they're always saying all the great things about how penn state did this for them or penn state did that for them James Franklin still reaches out to this guy, ex ex player still when he's been in the league for uh, six years. This guy didn't even play for Franklin, and he's getting yeah. reached out by Franklin and crew, just checking in to see and make sure they're all good and everything. So that family culture really is a selling point for them, and it's it's a big reason why they got Derek Plaz. Yeah, and Plaz, like I said, a natural. I personally, and and it's not to throw shade at mm-hmm. Egan. Uh, I'm slipping, slipping my mind for names, but uh, because that Garrett Sexton and Egan Boyer, yeah. uh, there it's nothing against them. But right now, in terms of polish, Derek Plaz is the better prospect long term because they have such mm-hmm. great, great frames as well. They just need to add some weight. I think it's a level competition. Um, but mm-hmm. the the analysis says that you know Plaz's athleticism and the tape. You watch the film; Plaz's tape is, is really good, uh, solid frame. He's only going to mm-hmm. get bigger, stronger. And I don't want to immediately compare him to Olu Fashionu, but we looked at Olu Fashionu as a prospect from Gonzaga not too long ago. And it was kind of this similar thing, very athletic, very intelligent, mm-hmm. uh, and someone that could be an anchor at both tackle spots. Ultimately, Olu, of course, became that left tackle. But yeah. uh, Plaz, I think, can he play either spot? And maybe he can be that next blindside protector uh, in waiting. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, just watching his tape alone, he bends really well. He's got a good, solid stance. Um, he moves well, really well um, laterally. Um, great pass protector. Uh, I think the biggest thing you got to watch with him is his length. Like he uses his length and hand placement to just control the defender and kind of push mm-hmm. the um, push the edge rushers wherever they, wherever he wants to put them, basically. And he, and he just keeps them away from the quarterback. He uh, as a run blocker, he's also pretty quick off the ball, off the snap. Um, and, and like I said before, he bends really well. So he's got that, um, I don't even know how to say it. He's got really good, um, size and speed and everything kind of combines to where you kind of get that Fashanu type, uh, type of mold. So it makes sense. Um, I'd like to see him block on the move a little bit more and block in mm-hmm. space more, but that, I mean, you can't really complain when he's doing all that. Um, whether it be in pass blocking and run blocking though. So he, uh, he has a really high ceiling. And the cool thing about uh, his ranking is I know he's a 5.73 star, which is like a borderline four star for us mm-hmm. or about to be four star. Um, so we got a new Florida recruiting analyst and John Garcia Jr. And he's uh he's very, very high on this guy. So it would not shock me one bit if he ends up as a four star when uh, rankings updates come, I think uh, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, whatever it is. 
what do a lot of these commits all have in common? Under the radar, <laughs> underrated, disrespected Penn State, whether yeah. it's Mike Yersich when it comes to quarterbacks, because Drew mm -hmm. Aller was in the same case. You look at the original tape from Drew Aller, and it's like, oh, boy, but he developed, <laughs> and they saw that immediately, and other schools were like, hey, by the way, do you want now? And nope. that's and that's ultimately, <laughs> but I think you brought up um, a good point about Plaza's recruitment in the fact of the official visit, that it mm -hmm. took – one visit for Penn State, and they yeah. sold him. And this is somebody that was from Florida, not from Maryland, Pennsylvania, that frequented Penn State quite a bit. Of course, Gilliam was there. You know, he was taking visits for the longest time and knew mm -hmm. he was in love with the place. Plaz came up one time, and Penn State was all in on securing his commitment. Of course, they're like that with any recruit. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Plaz, that official visit is so important. So don't think that, oh, these yeah. are just – part of the routine kids are just taking these just because Penn state can secure commitments in a 24 to 48 hour window uh, mm -hmm. with the right pitch to the right player, right? You want to get the player that fits your system and the system that fits the player uh, as well. So Richie, the age old question is now Penn state's back in the top five. Of course they are fifth according to rivals, but how can this recruiting class get better? Um, like I just said, I think the next ranking update rankings update is going to be huge. And on top of that, they're, they're also, pers they're not done with this June 2nd official visitor cycle either. No. Um, there's multiple guys that, um, are very close to committing like a Jalen Hornsby out of Camden, New Jersey. Um, one of their top wide receiver targets. I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up committing relatively soon. I know he's supposed to visit Syracuse Rutgers and somewhere else. Um, but I wouldn't be, I'd be shocked if he made those visits. Um, Liam Andrews, who's an offensive tackle slash defensive tackle. I know he wants to play DT at the next level. So for everyone that complains about the lack of defensive tackle recruiting, there's one right there, there that could go. commit. Yep. Uh, and join Xavier Gillum on, on that uh, interior. Chris Cole, a linebacker of Virginia, was on campus too. I'd keep a close eye on. And then the other two I'd, I'd really, really watch for are uh, Sion Lolea. Lolea. Yeah. I think I pronounced that correctly. Uh, yep. That's a tough one. Uh, Juco <laughs> DB out of uh, – out of California. And it seems like that prototypical guy that like Penn state just always lands like a, a Juco corner from somewhere. Um, and that would be this one in this class. And then next, this upcoming weekend, I don't want to dive too far ahead, but right. they got a ton of visitors on campus and it's probably led by Nick Marsh, the former Michigan state um, commit who, if all things pan out correctly, we have a future cast in for him already. I think he ends up at Penn state. So and they might even add another lineman. <laughs> I gotta just throw that out there too. So this class is gonna be huge. It's gonna have 25 plus, in my opinion. And um, I wouldn't be shocked if you get another two to three this upcoming weekend. Locked on Nittany Lions is your go-to podcast for Penn State rivals. Visit happyvalleyinsider.com for all the latest when it comes to Penn State football recruiting and so much more as we are here in June. Richie, in this final segment, just to kind of put a bow tie on it all, wrap it up. Uh, Penn State, of course, you talked about the commits that Penn State has the best favor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whether that is Jalen Hornsby. Uh, and and good because Penn State mm -hmm. needs wide receivers. It was nice to see Deion Barnes finally get on the board and, yeah. and get that defensive line, whether it's defensive end, defensive tackle. We know that Barnes played defensive end at Penn State and in mm -hmm. the NFL, so that's more of his natural. But he's the defensive line coach. But the thing mm -hmm. that I pointed out in my most recent solo episode is the fact that Penn State is missing recruits from two positions. Now you have one defensive lineman in the mm -hmm. room, but wide receiver as well. So is that the position that finally blows up that spikes for Penn State now that Marcus Haggins has been in the fold for a good chunk of time now? Of course, mm -hmm. it was an abrupt firing of Taylor Stubblefield, but it was also an abrupt hiring to get somebody the caliber of Marcus Haggins. So they've also been talking to quite a few other recruits. Nick Marsh, as you had mentioned, uh, is there going to be the first domino to fall and Penn state lands a wide receiver on the board. Do you think it's Marsh? Do you think it's Hornsby? Do you think it's somebody else? Again, some of those guys came up from the Florida area that uh, mm -hmm. are do have Penn state in their top, top two, top three. Yeah, no, I, th I think Hornsby is probably the betting favorite currently, okay. but that could change really quickly. Um, I know he's, he's favoring, he's almost leaning Penn state. If you want to call it that. Right. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if he committed this weekend before the official visits even started. Now, if he doesn't and waits another week and takes one more official visit, like I said, he's supposed to visit Rutgers this upcoming weekend. Does the hometown team maybe just give them the official visit? But even then, I'd still think he's leaning Penn State. Um, but and Nick Marsh could end up committing on a Saturday or Sunday. I, I think it's one of those wow. two for sure. 
Um, maybe it's probably going to be both if I had to guess just off the top of my head right now. And then, um, I keep a really close eye on, and mind you, I'm looking really far ahead now. Uh, June mm -hmm. 16th is, uh, Josiah Brown out of New York, the speedster. He's like a wide receiver DB. He's probably going to start out at wide receiver for Penn state, but, uh, I think they have a really good shot at him if, uh, if they get to that, um, yeah, I mean, not when they get, when they get to that weekend of June 16th. What about Jeray Hawkins? Hawkins has an interesting recruitment because I, I, I don't know the exact date of his Miami, Florida official visit, mm -hmm. but I know that he's visiting Miami before Penn State and his commitment date is set for the 26th, three days after he's scheduled to be on campus for Friday, June 23rd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I personally see him sticking down there. I know Penn State's okay. selling the whole hometown feel thing. But um, I from I Russ, think, he's from West Virginia yes, originally. Yeah, yep. yeah, hometown or closer to right. than Florida, obviously. Yeah, um, I should have clarified there. But uh, yeah, I do end up thinking he stays down there, whether it be uh, Miami, whether it be Florida. I think he's visiting both of them. I think it's Florida this weekend. Miami was last weekend, and then Penn State's the twenty third. I think there's a fourth one in there somewhere too. Um, but yeah, he's um, I, I would I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up in Miami. To be honest with you. Um, the Hurricanes have done a good job recruiting the state of Florida, and he, he's a little undersized too. It sounds like Penn State isn't too happy with his size. I think he's listed five nine, which always is kind of inflated a little bit, so that's always a concern. But if you can ball, you can ball at the end of the day. So I, I don't think it bothers me personally, but I'm not a college coach, so I, I would uh, I would say that's probably the main factor keeping Penn State from pushing a little bit harder there. Yeah, Hawkins, I mean, at least if we really want to draw some comparisons here, I'm not saying he is KJ Hamler, but he's five foot nine. He's about 160, 165, kind of like mm -hmm. a KJ, and he plays at IMG. <laughs> there you go. So, so uh, yeah. it, there's a lot of similarities there, but uh, and mm -hmm. then just wide receiver, maybe even defensive end. I'm waiting for a guy like a Jalen Harvey or a Malachi Williams to, to even commit Penn state. Mm -hmm. Do they have favor? Do they have the lead on those recruitments as well? Yeah. So Jalen Harvey canceled all his official visits after this weekend. So he was scheduled to go to there Florida, Notre Dame. Um, there was a third one somewhere. I can't remember who it was, but he canceled them all. And uh, that kind of tells you what's what's going on there. So I'd probably say just about any day now for him. Yeah. Uh, now, in terms of Malachi Williams, he will be here in State College this upcoming weekend. Future cast submitted already. I would not be surprised if that one was locked up too. I think you get another. You might get another three this weekend, maybe more. So we'll we'll kind of wait and see what happens there. But uh, that's another Rivals 250 kid too. So that's it's only going to help that top five ranking. Are there any wild cards here? Uh, Richie for you because there's a lot of other entry especially when it comes to June 9th and I'm excited to preview that as the day gets closer mm -hmm. but I, I know Nick Marsh is in there I think of guys like Jamonte Waller who are from the state of Mississippi mm -hmm. they are really true wild cards in this case um, but guys that Penn State may might be lower on their list now maybe that could change after an official visit who do you who do you pinpoint as those players that's one I'd keep an eye on, Jamonta Waller. I, I don't really know where he's leaning because I'm not too familiar with uh, with talking to him, but I know the coaching staff's extremely high on him. Um, he, he's slotted pretty high on their board. One I'm really keeping a close eye on, though, is Nigel Smith. He's a defensive end out of Texas, uh, Melissa High School in, down in Texas. Now, he's pegged as an Oklahoma lean, but so now he's a Texas kid, mind you. Um, you don't get many Texas kids in Penn, to Penn State in the first place. Mari Evans, obviously, recently, but um, mm -hmm. he has a lot, a lot of family in New Jersey. Um, so that's kind of the whole selling pitch there. And he goes and visits them more often than you'd think. Um, so that's just something they're kind of keeping a close eye on. Maybe you get him to campus and he takes a quick look and he's like, you know what? I got family down the street. I've been here a couple of times already. I think he was there in April. He was there in November. And I believe he was there in September as well. So it's he's very familiar with the staff. It's just that Oklahoma being close to his current home is what's playing a big factor there for the Sooners. But they've been struggling lately. So I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Penn State kind of hits on that and it's like, hey, like they're struggling. We're we're, we're looking as a what top ten favorite to to make the playoffs or something like that at the very win. least. Yeah. Yeah. So I would probably play on that a little bit if I was Penn State, and um, I I really think he's one to keep a an interesting. Uh, close eye on but not too close Some, someone just to watch and monitor a little bit all right just real quickly here richie because as, as we finish up mm -hmm. is penn state just at this point in time 
early June, first couple weeks of June here, do you see Penn State for the class of 2024 finishing in the top five, or do you still see them finishing maybe uh, just inside the top 10 or even the top 15? Where do you have them projected just real quickly? I'm going to go definitely top 10. I think they're going to be very, very, very close to top five. It, it really comes down to like the nitty gritty of the rankings and whether this guy's ranked here or that guy's ranked there. But like I said, I think Grunkmeyer, Grunkmeyer is underrated. Derek Plaza is underrated. Xavier Gilliam's underrated. Uh, the list, Luke Reynolds is underrated. And these guys are all committed. So let's just wait and see what these rankings look like in the next update. And it'll kind of give us a better feel for where uh, they're going to end up. And right now, I'm going to say probably top seven, if I had to guess. All right. That's kind of where I have them at sixth. Okay. Uh, just, yeah. uh, just in my mind. I know that's we're really splitting hairs here, but same no, thing. Yeah. You have yeah. seventh, sixth. I do have them firmly inside the top 10. Mm -hmm. And I, if you can bump these players up, if they take a significant jump, like a Luke Reynolds becomes a solid four star, those go a long way. And Penn State could finish fourth or fifth when all said and done, if they can add players and definitely Williams, Harvey. Hornsby, Marsh. I mean, the list goes on and on. We'll see what we'll see what's next here on the horizon. Richie, can't wait to have you back on. I always enjoy our conversations. If you love the conversations that we have, keep following along with myself and Richie. Richie, where can people keep up with you? Uh, HappyValleyInsider.com. Um, you can check out the Lions Den message board. We have tons of content on there. Little recruiting scoops that aren't article, I guess, worthy more or less like official visit set. This guy's rumored here. Etc. And then also check me out on Twitter at, at Rivals Richie or at Penn State Rivals. Um, follow us on either account and you'll get your uh, more than your daily fill of Penn State content. So, Richie, thanks so much for the time today. Can't wait to do this again soon. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.